Hello everybody. It is Saturday late afternoon. You can hear the tohi calling. The tohi likes to sit up in that end of that dead tree and just sing and sing. So people when we're getting ready for vacation, this is our vacation. Nine days, I think it is, a vacation. People said, make sure to do updates. And, I don't know, it's all so random. I'm not sure what to update. So, I guess as usual, anyone who knows me, I'll just ramble a little bit. So, I got up here Thursday. Was it Thursday? Thursday afternoon. And this is Saturday. Um... Thursday I pulled a lot of weeds, a lot of the excess mullein. I'm going to leave a lot of the mullein grow. Mullein's good, I think I mentioned this last video. I found out that mullein is good for tea. It is good for lung health. Apparently they used to use it for TB treatment, tuberculosis treatment. Um, I like it because when it develops these flowers, these spears with the flowers on the end, I have seen goldfinch sitting on those, the ends, and just hanging out. I don't know if they eat the seeds or they just like to perch there. I'm not quite sure. But that's why I like the mullein. And I will continue to let the mullein grow down in this area. I don't know what that is. That is beautiful. The pollinators love it. I need to look it up. I have no idea what it is. Of course, it's probably a weed that's going to take over, but it's beautiful. So that's my next thing to identify. But this area, to a point, I want to leave the thistle and mullein continue to grow. And I'll continue to leave it grow up pretty wild. There's a, not a ditch, but kind of a flat spot that runs, I always say flat, there's nothing flat up here, I've said a million times. But there's a pathway there that the does love to come and give birth to their fawns apparently in that area. I did find one apparently stillborn newborn fawn in that area but the does and their fawns love to hang out there when everything's quiet so I want to leave that keep growing up for them but the mullein on the other side of my yard I don't want it to take over so I spent a lot of time up there at the beginning of the driveway pulling that out and I need to pull the rest of that out before I leave. And over on that side where the shed, the flat spot where the shed is going to be was nothing but mullein. So I pulled that out and I need to keep working on this area. You see that there's some mullein still there. So that's the project I plan on keep working on. I'm sunburnt from the other day though, so today I'm just kind of taking it easy. So, last night I had planned on sleeping in the shed. Oh, what is this? That's a pretty little moth. I hope it's not that invasive lantern moth. I don't think it is. I think the lantern moth looks different. Anyway, I planned on sleeping on the shed in the shed because everything is up there in the shed. But at midnight, I woke up to the huge gusts of winds, and I thought, oh my gosh, the shed's going to blow over. And I've been up there in the shed during really heavy-duty storms before, but last night the wind was really weird. It'd be calm and then a huge gust of wind, so after midnight, I just grabbed the dogs one blanket and came running down here to sleep. So today I'm a little more prepared. I plan on sleeping down here tonight just because, just because I broke the ice yesterday and slept down here. So I just brought some of the necessities. I don't know, there's nothing in there really worth looking at. The Kindle protection, coffee, sleeping bag. So, progress on the house. They installed my 
doohickey for the wood stove. Yay! And that goes all the way up through. And the outside is the chimney's up outside. I think my last video I had the cupboards in. So I chose unfinished because they were the cheapest. And then once I get my countertop in, I will stain these. I haven't decided on the color, how light or dark. I'll wait till after the countertop. So when they were working here Friday, I guess it was, they mostly got my range hood installed. And of course the thing outside slaps in the wind, so I hope when they're all finished it is a little more secure. And the bathroom vanity with all my junk from sleeping in here. There we go. My bathroom vanity is in. So, some of the necessities. Container for food, pasta, water, tea, soda, more water. These things, if you ever think about camping, these are the best. I have been using this same one the whole time I've been camping here and my best friend gave it to me so it was used before I got it. These things are wonderful except for in the winter time when I slept in the shack it was too cold to light so in the winter time I always make sure to have matches also. This thing is fantastic. It was also donated to me and it's solar and it's got the weather channel. I usually only listen to the weather channel. Lows in the mid 60s. Southwest winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. So when you try to listen to any of your apps on the phone or look at any of the apps on your phone with the weather predictions, they're always inaccurate up here. And so that's the best way to get accurate information. So if you're planning on camping or whatever, that kind of thing I think is best. So, there's my screens for my doors. I still need my surround for the tub. Future wash closet is dog feeding station right now. I don't know, there's not a whole lot to update, I guess. So this is where I will be sleeping tonight. I'm finally brave enough to sleep here. People said, why don't you sleep here before I had doors and windows? I was not that brave between the possibility of bears and possums and raccoons and bats. You guys, those of you who know me know that bats inside are not okay. So I would faint or fall down on the floor and not be able to move and there's nobody nearby to come fetch me. So yeah, but now that the doors, <coughs> sorry, now that the doors and windows are in and the, I've been sweeping the floor. I need to mop the floor. But I've been sweeping the floor, so most of the drywall dust is gone. So here I am. Maybe I'll take you outside and show you the garden. So this is up by the top of the driveway. Where the shed, the flat spot where the shed will go. And that's all the mullein I pulled out of that spot. And then the little flower garden. I was so surprised that when I arrived this trip, everything was still there. The tomatoes didn't grow much because it was so dry while I was away. But they're still there. So tomatoes, jalapeno peppers, marigolds, one basil plant, and Anasazi beans. My friend that just moved in this area from New Jersey. She planted Anasazi beans also, and she has a really well-fenced garden. Some groundhog got in there, and we can't figure out how. We don't know, do groundhogs climb fences? Because it doesn't seem like it could get in any other way. Ate her Anasazi beans. So, I am surprised mine are all still here, along with my marigolds. My Japanese maple is still there. 
my cherry tomato. It's doing great. I forget the names of these. My friends gave them to me. They were, they were created by some university in New Jersey, maybe. She swears by them. She loves them. <clears throat> I have to try to remember those names or ask her. So those are bigger, like a slicing tomato. And these are cherry tomatoes from what I had here previously. I had tried to catch rainwater so it would be easier to water from here and once you know there was a rodent floating in it so I'm starting over. I don't know if you can see but back there are two squash in the ground. This is that cherry tomato is doing fantastic. This is a volunteer cherry tomato from the same one that I got seeds for the, from that. Zucchini squash, doing great. Strawberries still here. The cabbage are in the cage. Something's chewing on them though. I don't know how much longer they'll last. Lavender, love the lavender. I did read I'm supposed to trim, prune the lilac so that it does better next year, but I'm not sure how but I'm supposed to do it in this time frame so it does better next year. So I have to look that up and maybe trim it during this trip. I never knew that, that you trim lilac bushes. Who knew? There's a little better maybe. Look at the cabbage. <coughs> Calendula. And look. Coneflower coming up. I'm surprised because that's where I thought it was going to come up and it did not. So there, I don't know if that's a volunteer or if that's a plant I planted last year that's just now coming up. I don't know. So there we go. That's the little bit of a garden. I'm kind of wimpy out here today because one of the neighbors stopped by and said, there's an angry male bear running around. Um, did it kill? Oh, jeez. Cicadas. I'm so done with the cicadas. Um, that it killed a baby bear cub. And I'm already cautious about the bears up here. And then another neighbor reminded me that this is rattlesnake season. So, yeah. I'm a little worried about rattlesnakes. Sorry, had to straighten the prayer flags. So, everybody who's struggling right now, I still think of you all the time. Especially while I'm up here. So apparently all my little spinny doodads and things that wave in the wind seem to be keeping the deer and assorted things away. So that's good. I hope they also keep away the bear. Okay, let me go up here and show you something else. I have no idea if you can hear. Oh no, it flew away. One year I was up here and I listened to some eagles and my daughter-in-law helped me identify that they were probably golden eagles. And I'm hearing the same thing. And I've been watching them today. But they fly so high up, it's impossible to really see them. I can't even see it in my camera. But on super windy days, in the spring I've noticed them. And you can hear them because you can hear their screech. And usually they're down in there in the valley. And they're flying around, chasing each other, catching on to each other, all kinds of acrobatics in the air. So there's been several flying around today on the wind. I'm not going to be able to come close to finding it. I wonder
wonder if it's the eagles again, the golden eagles. Anyway, that's not what I came up here to show you. So up here by the shed, is a little smokeberry, smokeberry, service berry tree. I always call it smokeberry. It's a service berry tree. And it is a smoke something variety. It never does super well, but it's still alive. But look at that bee balm. At like that spot, it's doing great. And then I had one little extra zucchini plant. I planted there just because I had nowhere else to put it. So, I'm really excited about this. That bee balm. So I can still, I'm so distracted by the eagles, I can hear them. Just can't see them. But every once in a while I'll catch a glimpse. Anyway. Ugh. I'll be glad when all that's cleaned up and I have planters there instead. And a driveway. And the Jeep's parked down there next to the house. Can't wait for all that. Hopefully over the next couple days I will get the mullein pulled out of the spot where I planted the deer plot seeds. And the clover had been growing here. I'm going to plant more clover. And otherwise I just plan on reading and hanging out. Not doing a whole lot. Okay. Take care. Every time I shut the video off, they stop making the noise. They're still flying around up there, but I don't think you can see them at all. And I'm starting to wonder if they're bald eagles. I do know that the South Branch, Potomac, is down in that way. And that there's a scenic train that people can go on rides and see the bald eagles, among other things. So, maybe they're bald eagles. I don't know. I know they're not vultures, because if I was standing out here this long, the vultures would be swooping down to see if I was snack yet. Vultures check me out often. Um, but yeah, these are some kind of eagle or something. And they fly so high you can just barely see them. You can only hear them if you're listening closely. But I am not able. I don't think. Lily! I'm not talking to you. I'm not eagle. So look! Okay, see what I said about the vulture? I don't know if you can see it. Here it comes. It's like, Is that old lady snack yet? <laughs> many, many vultures up here. And they fly very close to take a look. But whatever is out there... <coughs> Willie!
I would be a big old fat liar if I said I'm never nervous up here. Sometimes it's a little weird up here at night. It gets a little scary once in a while because you can't see what's out there. The sound from the highway carries up from the valley below. So I can hear things down there. Sometimes I can hear voices from way down the road. There's a house with a balcony. And if they're out, I guess, if when they're outside, I can hear their voices. And I'm not sure if that's some kind of fireworks in the distance or if that's thunder in the distance. It's pretty awesome up here. I could, came up so I could catch the song of the whippoorwill. First time I ever heard one in real life, I think, was up here in June. Can't tell you what year, but I know it was in June because it was the same weekend the Bluegrass Festival was happening. Pretty cool to hear one in real life, I think. Of course, you guys are catching on that I'm kind of a bird nerd. A little bit. Novice. I'm a novice bird nerd. So let's see if I can get that whippoorwill stand up here long enough to get it to sing for you guys. <laughs> 